Today we're reviewing slash critiquing a handful of iOS developer portfolios. Some quick disclaimers, I don't claim to be a professional portfolio designer or anything like that. I do think I have a pretty good eye for design, but this is just my opinion. And if something I say comes off as maybe like harsh, like that is not my intention. The whole point of doing this is to give examples of portfolios and give my tips and insights to hopefully inspire those watching this to create their own. And speaking of creating your own, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So after you watch this video, if you're interested in starting your own portfolio, head to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to check them out. First up, we have Luke Mulholland here, iOS developer at Soxbox Games. Uh, first of all, right off the bat, it gives me a very clean, I like the color combo. Just a clean first impression. Very good. I, I like this. And you tell me a little bit about you. Not you don't you don't tell me too much. It's not a huge long paragraph. Just three quick blurbs. Uh, really like that. And then I scroll down to the portfolio. Now normally. I personally, just my opinion, am not a fan of these motion graphics in the background. I find them to be unnecessary distractions. However, in this particular case, right, it's not the huge background moving, it's just a strip. Uh, so I do think that is a nice little accent in this case. However, in general, I typically find those distracting, but it works here. Uh, onto the portfolio. So again, still looking clean. You got a nice uh, icon right there, the name of the app. I guess this is like the little slogan, it's a swing thing. Real quick, an auto-regenerating arcade game with animations, physics, base. You just give me a real quick blurb on what the app is, then I get to see pictures of it. And if you've seen me do these videos before, you see me stress the same things. And that is, like, don't make the person reviewing your portfolio, like, don't make them dig, don't make them work. Just put everything real quick and up front, and then give them the option to dig should they want. So now that I've said that, that is my knock here, Luke, or, or I shouldn't say knock. That is the advice I'll give you here is... I feel like you do a great, we'll call it surface layer, layer one. Like, I think your layer one is great. You keep it short, keep it snappy. You show me stuff. You tell me a little bit. However, I don't really have the option to dig deeper once I'm impressed with this, you know, layer one. I can't go to layer two. There is no layer two, right? Like, I can't click on this. There's nothing to click on. I mean, I can click download, but that just takes me to the app store. So I would recommend creating either a pop-up that shows more screenshots or maybe you know it goes to another page that has more information and tells you more about the app. Uh, again, that would be my one knock here is that I can't, I can't dig if I want to. Remember, I, I talk a lot about earning the deeper look. Well, in my opinion, you know, this looks nice. Just right by the time I scrolled here, you've already earned the deeper look, which is great. Uh, I just can't look deeper. So some other things here, again, I, I love the fact that you're showing different devices, that, that shows me a lot. However, I would keep it the most recent devices. This is my personal opinion. Like we're building, you know, technologies, like the latest and greatest stuff. This just looks dated to me. Now I understand not every iPad is an iPad Pro. The iPhone SE still exists. So devices like this exist. I get that. I, I just think you want to portray that like you're, you know, you're up to date on the latest and greatest. And then uh, I believe this is a missed opportunity to show multiple screens. Like, you know, you're showing the same screenshot on all the devices, I, I think. And, and you kind of show a little bit of variety up here. But if it were me, I would take the opportunity here to show three different screens um, on each device because now you're showing that app uh, a lot more. So I definitely do that uh, like, like this. This shows off three different screens. That's great. I would just do the same thing uh, with these apps up here. Uh, and then you have your, you know, your, your get in contact. So overall, Luke, uh, I definitely like this. Uh, like I said, you, you earned the deeper look. You definitely passed that surface level test. I just can't really dig deeper. So that's my advice there. But overall, good one. Next up, we have Didier Dorielin. I'm sure I butchered that. My apologies. But right away, this feels professional. It feels nice and clean. Like I get a nice first impression immediately. But as soon as I scroll down, if I give a little bit of knock, uh, services. Overall, this looks good. However, I see services in the center. And then the, you know, the little things are like shifted to the left a little bit. So that's like a little attention to detail thing. And again, when I, this was my legit reaction when I first saw this, I was like, oh, wow, this is nice. And then I scrolled down and I was like, oh, <laughs> not that this is a huge knock. Of course, this is kind of nitpicky. But again, with as software developers, you have to remember, attention to detail is a huge part of our job. So seeing things like this, again, it's just a little knock. It's not, you know, it's nothing like crazy, but uh, it definitely was a, ooh, okay. So just center that. I'm sure that's a, a pretty easy fix. Um, but down here you have your about me. So overall you can see this is a very nice professional looking site. My, uh, I guess my tips here or what I would do differently. Again, just my opinion, take it or leave it. 
I think the information hierarchy is a is a little out of whack. Um, I would kind of adjust the order of this. So I see right here, right, right up here, you just have your your face, your name, and what you are: entrepreneur, senior software engineer, uh, etc. Uh, first of all, one thing on this is I don't kind of like these rotating things because now I got to wait to see what they say. You're kind of like. I don't know, you're slowing the user down. I think it'd be cool if you just maybe listed them, like tech consultant, entrepreneur, senior software engineer, just like horizontally under your name. Just give the information right away. Uh, the other thing I would add to that top part is your value proposition, because I see, I gotta scroll all the way down here and kind of dig for it, right? This is according to at least what I know of you <laughs> from, from this website, this is what you do, right? I work exclusively with startup founders who are raising money and are looking to build their MVP to get to market in three to six months. So you specialize in working with startups to get that initial product out. It's pretty much how I spent my career too, so I'm pretty familiar with this. However, I think, you know, this might be a little bit long. I might reword it, but this is your value prop. Like, this is what you do. So I think you should have that up here. Bam, here's your name, tech consultant, entrepreneur, senior software developer, and then basically say like, I will take your, I will create your startups MVP and get you to market quickly. You can, you can reword it, but... I think that should be your value prop up here. So people know exactly who you are and what you do right away instead of having to dig. So again, I think it looks great. It just needs to be, in my opinion, the order needs to be shifted around. Next up, we have Dan Hilton. And Dan, I, I talk about this on pretty much every video is I believe, my opinion, take it or leave it, that this giant section up here with just a computer screen and your name is just a waste of space. You make the user scroll to learn anything about you. So, and especially because you have your this emoji up here and your name right there, it's pretty redundant, like right here. It just feels feels wasteful to me. Um, so I would either make this a smaller stripe, like reduce the height of it by a lot, uh, or nix it all together. Uh, you know, of course, it's your website. Do what you want. Um, I do like the about. Tell me right away. You show me a picture of you. Tell me a little bit about you. I like that. Uh, this might be like one sentence too long. Again, that's personal preference. Um, I like the shorter the better, but I, that's super nitpicky. You can take that or leave that. What I really liked about your portfolio though, uh, Dan, is I like the way you present your projects, right? You got a little blurb about what it is on the right, and then I can quickly skim through different screenshots of the app on the left. And as I scroll down, okay, Dougal, cool. Cool screenshots, screenshots, little Tinder for dogs, it looks like. Uh, Corona check. But you see how quickly I can look at the project, read a quick little blurb, see screenshots. Again, back to my biggest thing I say, don't make the user dig and work. Like I can easily see your work very quickly. And I love that you give me the option here, right? So on the right, you give me the little blurb about what it does. But I have the option to dig more. Remember I said that about Luke's at the beginning. Like if you pass the surface level test, if you earn that deeper look, give me a way to look deeper. So I can click read more, and now I can learn more about the details of this specific app, and you see each app is gonna have this read more uh, where I can see this. So I actually hadn't seen this read more thing uh, before in any of my portfolio reviews. I really, really like this. So that would be it's probably my favorite thing about this, uh, as well as being able to swipe through these screenshots very quickly. I think that's nice. And then scrolling down here, uh, skills and interests. So you talk about some, some random skills here, and, and I, I do, I've said this a lot, I do like learning about the person outside of the developer. So I'm a big fan of sharing this. I know some people, you know, may disagree. They may not want to share that, but I'm a big fan of this. Like, let me learn about you, the person, uh, not just what you can do with your code. So overall, Dan, I really liked it, especially your, your project section. My, my main gripe is that I feel like this giant image here is pretty wasteful and you got to make me scroll down to see anything. So again, that'd be my biggest takeaway. Just reduce this or or get rid of it next up we have owner and here is a a decent uh use of making the images real big right like yes i am against just like a random image like if we go back to dan's like i don't know if that's his computer or not to me it looks like a stock photo of you know it's not it's not objective c or swift on the screen so i assume it's a stock photo uh so that that's kind of what i'm talking about however on owners this is his project he's showing me right away and i'm assuming this is probably the one he's most proud of or the one that looks the best at least that's what you should be doing on this huge hero image uh so he's showing me the work right away so that is an example of you know a, a decent use of making large imagery uh, at the top but just a random stock footage or just a design in your name i find that to be wasteful uh, and then he tells me a little bit about himself self-taught ios developer with an interest in beautiful ui design cool uh, so if I scroll down to the projects here, again, we get right into pictures of the project and a quick little blurb about it. Like, again, make it easy and quick for the user uh, to see here. And then I can dig deeper, like I've been mentioning, more info, 
Cool, it takes me to the GitHub page, uh, and then I get more images here. You know I love a good readme on the GitHub, so you tell me a little bit about it, you tell me the technologies used. Again, you're giving me the right information. I would uh, I would tweak these screenshots. You see how they like kind of blur together? It's I mean, you can tell like which phone it is, but I think you can make this look neater. I mean, obviously if I go back, like you know how to put a phone frame around images, right? You did it here, you did it there. Uh, why not do that for your, your GitHub repo as well, instead of just kind of cramming these random screenshots? Just clean, clean this up a little bit, but overall you have the right idea in having a good readme there for the more info. And obviously if they want to go on that deeper look, they can dig into the code. Uh, so we go back to your portfolio here. One thing I would do, and this is kind of nitpicky here, is I would be like consistent maybe, I don't know. Like the, So this has like a light gray background of your images. This is a dark gray, this is a light gray, dark gray. I, I get what you're going for. You're going back and forth. That's not the end of the world. Um, I don't know, I guess that is consistent if you're going back and forth. Uh, I would have thought one color would have been better. My preference. One thing that stood out to me though, uh, when I was reading yours is, I would be careful, at, like, for example, I was reading this app and it says, uh, you know, uh, fun things they can do at home through a beautiful UI that fully supports dark mode. Like you said, beautiful UI, and then you look at the screenshots and it's like white text on a black background and like nothing else. So I don't know if you're going to like make these kind of claims, like, you know, I know design in, is, is subjective, but uh, yeah, be careful, like making claims when I don't know, you can't really back them up, but that's super nitpicky. Again, I kind of just smiled like when I, when I read that. Um, but yeah, you tell me about the uh, the projects, show me the pictures and give me the opportunity to dig deeper. Overall, the structure is nice. What I would work on in this portfolio, because again, I feel like you're, you're giving me the right information. You're showing me the right stuff. Uh, and again, design is subjective. So you can think I'm completely off base. I would work on the overall aesthetic uh, and the look and feel of the, uh, the web page. To me, it just, I don't know. Again, design is subjective. This design doesn't really like speak to me. However, you're, you're giving the right information. So step one is done. I would work on just the overall look and feel of it. And I know that's vague, but you know, design is subjective. I, I would search around for some portfolios and maybe, you know, work on the design. Next up, we have Dan O'Leary and his app Run Roster. Now, when I do these videos and I pick the portfolios, I kind of have a rough idea of what I'm going to say. And I had something to say about Dan's and he totally contradicted me in a tweet because he did just get hired as like a side project to do development. Because part of what I was going to talk about was how, you know, this isn't necessarily a portfolio because, you know, Dan has a full time job. Uh, he's kind of like a hobbyist. But then he just announced on Twitter he, you know, kind of got like a part time job. So he's not not going for the full time gig. But anyway, kind of contradicted what I was going to say. But uh, so. This is for an app specifically, so this is a little different. Um, you know, that's why this kind of hero might not be bad showing like a marathon, because that's what this is for. But what I like about this is you, you tell the story of why you wrote this app. Like he leads with it. This is an app I wrote for my wife. Like, and he tells a story about she runs all these marathons and wanted an app. So like the story behind your app, I think is very, very uh, important. And you know, it's interesting to show uh, in the picture of his wife here. Uh, the, this is what I wanted to point out why I wanted to share this is I like the fact that, you know, if you do something extra, like have a watch app with your app, absolutely show that off. However, what I wanted to kind of pick on Dan for and, and give people some advice is, well, to me, this looks like this is just his app store screenshots just posted on a, on a website. What I would do, and he did it with the watch, right? You see how the watches have a, I don't know if it's a white background or a transparent background, who knows, but you can see it looks a lot better without this like purple background. So if you do something like this, I would just edit out the purple background, make the phones look like they're floating. Uh, same thing with the, the watches. So those are the two main takeaways I wanted to share this for is make sure you know, you're consistent in your design. You know, if you're gonna have a background, have a background for everything. If you're gonna have a transparent background, have a transparent background for everything. And then I wanted to share how Dan told the story on why he built that app, because I think that's valuable too. Next up, we have Leonte's website. Now, my main gripe with this website, I think is unwarranted. <laughs> let me let me tell you why. To me, as soon as I see this, this is clearly publishes default theme, right? Like I know exactly how he built this. I know what he did. You know, you can see it kind of looks like Johnson Dell's website. And I see this a lot with a lot of iOS developers who are trying to use publish. They all look the same because they're just using publish's default theme and not their own. And you don't have to do that. For example, my website here, I'll blow this up a little bit, like this is built in publish too, but it looks nothing like Johnson Dell's website. It looks nothing like the default thing. Um, now again, this is why I say this is unwarranted is because like, uh, I'm just, I, I'm too, uh, I'm too, you know, I can't see the forest through the trees is what, what they say. Cause 
I just, I see a lot of portfolios. I know all about publish. I've built my website and publish. So like, I think I know too much because the, like the typical employer or somebody looking to hire you as a contractor, like they're not going to know that. So it's probably fine. It's just my immediate reaction was like, oh, another default publish theme. Like, so take that for what it's worth, do what you want with it. But that was just my immediate reaction. But like I said, I admit it's probably not the typical reaction. So anyway, uh, I do like that you show the blog. Again, we, we've talked about this in other videos, showcasing that you're willing to write and create content. Of course, you don't have to create content to be a good developer, but to me, this shows that you like to teach people, like to share your knowledge. And if you're applying for a team, like I think that that, that is an extra little feather in your cap, if you will. Uh, let's go to the projects here. Now, uh, I like what you do because it's, it's kind of the... Uh, structure of my old website, how you tell a little bit about it. You talk about your role, what you did and technologies used again, real quick, just surface level information. I always, again, I love a good animated GIF uh, because you show the app in action. I said that out about a previous portfolio. What I would recommend doing here, Leonte, is this white background, like it's really bold, really stands out. It, it feels out of place. Now I know, I don't even know, can you do you probably can't do transparent backgrounds in an animated GIF. But so what I would recommend is, is make the background of your GIF the same color as, as this, as your website background. So it looks like the iPhone is just, you know, there. Because again, this white background, you'll see it on all the other projects. It just, it just feels really bold and out of place to me. Um, so that would be my re uh, recommendation. But like I said, I, I love the animated GIFs. I said it a thousand times. Show me the app in action. Uh, to me, that's a lot better than a screenshot. Uh, and then to your uh, home... Which you, know, you can see the articles, notes, and then you can see the about. Uh, again, I like sharing uh, about you. You like sailing, you like to read, you're learning Spanish, you're learning to play the piano. Like that's all interesting things, uh, you know, that tells us about you. So definitely share that. So overall, uh, again, I you're giving the right information. I just the reason that's the reason I wanted to share this was because the default publish theme is becoming very, very, very common. So I wanted to use this as maybe a warning to not use it. But again, I'll fully admit, I probably am too involved in this world and the normal employer won't have a clue probably. Next, we have Sylvain Goulier here. And I, I wanna address right away the huge, you know, hero image that I've, I've recommended against. However, this is another case, right? All, all rules have exceptions because it shows him on Apple campus. Like that is very like pertinent to being an iOS developer. Uh, my one recommendation on this is I would add, you know, a, a black 50% transparent overlay to like darken the image so you can still see it to make your, your name here and your value proposition pop because it does kind of blend in and can be hard to read. So if you darken the image a little bit, the, the white letters will, will pop out. So I would recommend that. And then also onto this, uh, I'm calling it the value prop because that's typically what you call it on a website, but it's computer science student at ENIB school and your email. So I would replace that with your about me, because to me, this about me is super important in combination with this education. Again, I don't know you, so maybe I'm off base, but my impression from looking at this is, okay, you're a fourth year in engineering school in France. You were a WWC 19 scholar. That's a big deal. That should be big, bold letters, right? But it's kind of like a footnote. So I think that should be more prominent. Uh, and you're in your master's program, right? In progress. So what I would do, is I would have your name here and then, you know, you can choose the exact wording, but something like, you know, Master of Computer Science student at ENIB school, WWC 19 scholar. Like, and have that big and bold under your name because you're giving very important information right up front, right? You're in your master's program and you're a WWC scholar. Like, you've earned the deeper look right there. You know what I mean? Instantly. But how you have it now, one, is kind of hard to read with the white letters and it feels like a little small footnote here. Uh, and then you go on to your education. And I see this a lot with, um, you know, uh, developers that are still in school. And I don't know, I, I could be off base here, but, <laughs> when, you know, because I've hired before and like, I didn't really care about the school. I wanted to see what you did. And, and where I'm going with this is uh, your, your projects are all at the bottom, whereas your schooling is up top. And I understand you're, you're in school now, so that's, you know, top of mind, but I would move the, what you've done, the projects up top and in specific, like a specific order too, right? We talked about how that WWC 19 scholar, like I said, that, that's a big deal. So 
you know, you see, I see this is your WWC 20 submission. Uh, and down here, like the fourth project is the one that you got, you won the WWC scholarship for. So again, I would lead with this and I would even maybe tell a little, little story behind it. I, in my opinion, I think this should be the focus of your portfolio, right? The one that got you to WWDC Scholar. Of course, still show your other work, but you know, just make that more prominent and lead with that. And then maybe the second one should be like, great, that's what I did in 2019. Now look what I'm doing in 2020 for my Watchmaker 2 submission and then tell a little story about that. And then I would have these other projects as like a small footnote, right? Uh, so again, uh, I think a lot of stuff I see uh, with these portfolios is a problem with information hierarchy, right? You got to put the most important, impressive stuff up front, big and bold, right? Lead with that. Don't kind of bury it and make them dig to find it. Um, another thing, you know, I, I've said this a lot, just showing a bunch of logos of language. I don't know, like, are you equally proficient at all eight of these languages? That feels weird. Um, you know, and how much can you possibly know about all, what is it? It's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight <laughs> in SQL. Like, so like, I don't know, you got to be better at some of these than others, right? I'm sure some of these you've just dabbled in, some of these you spent a lot of time on. Um, so if you're going to do something like this, at least inform the viewer, like how much you've done. So overall, Sylvain, uh, like I said, I think you got a lot of great stuff to share. Again, it boils down to information hierarchy. I think you should just adjust the order and how prominent things are, uh, like I mentioned. So hopefully this video inspired you to go out and create your own portfolio. Uh, and if you do decide to do that, like I recommend using Squarespace and they are today's sponsor. Now I understand we're developers. We have the desire to want to create our own and build our own portfolio, but you know, building your own website and maintaining it, like there's a lot that goes on there, right? Making sure it works on every browser, all the different screen sizes, right? Different fonts work with different browsers. Like it can be a headache, right? And we're iOS developers. We want to build apps like, Having that website to maintain, trust me, I, I tried building my own uh, in the beginning. It, it's, a, it's a headache. So that's why I recommend using Squarespace to get your portfolio up and running very quickly. They have tons of beautiful themes to choose from, great designs. They handle all the SEO and the analytics for you. So when you're ready to get started, head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to actually launch that portfolio, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that wraps up another portfolio review video. Again, I hope you got some inspiration, some tips, some ideas for your own portfolio. Go forth and create. See you in the next one.